Today I'm saying a huge thank you to the 5,000 subscribers that have helped make my YouTube channel possible. Hello and welcome to the Treasured Page. I'm Melanie and this is our quiet crafting space. And I'm hoping that you're also now having your own quiet crafting space from watching the videos. Perhaps that's inspired you to create your own area where you can go and feel relaxed and calm. You need time for you. That's what this channel is about. It's making time for you. And I think 5,000 of you have found value there and have agreed with me. So thank you, everybody. We are going to be having a giveaway for the 5,000 subscribers. And to enter into that, you need to leave a comment below on this video. And there will be five prizes which will consist of an ephemera paper pack to include Marianne North gift wrap paper and Marianne North postcards and they will be coming out to you with some other papers from my collections as well. So that's going to be five paper ephemera packs coming your way and we'll look at that when I'm ready to send everything I will show you all. So just leave a kind comment below and let me know where you come from. I've just been trying to print this out on my printer but the ink had gone and I was <laughs> only printing out looking like that. So I've ripped up these sheets and just while I'm chatting here I think I'm going to sort of pin them together. I always say that I've never got enough spare paper when I want to try and write something. Which is hilarious because I'm surrounded by paper but when it comes to actual paper that I want to make a note down on I don't seem to have anything so there we go I've now reused my scrap paper for something else here we go and I could just delve into the scrap tray here and see if we could just add something so let me move that that's amazing I'm so pleased I cannot believe it's happened and what I did when I first started the treasured page YouTube channel is I said I'll give it a year, I'll give it my absolute best shot and I'll see how we get on. And I haven't had the year yet, the year is next month. There we go, I've just stuck that over the top there and made that a bit more beautiful. And I've even found this little sentiment here which just says do it now. So I'm going to just stick that on, it's just for me. So let's just stick that down, do it now. So there we go, that's something that I can now put with my pen and I'm good to go. So now we're slightly more organised. I'm just going to show you this, this is a silicon mat that I got for the purpose of gluing and uh, it's quite good. And what I want to talk about today is dyeing paper using tea and coffee. I will just show you this, this is a sheet of A4 paper that has had tea applied to it and it hasn't frayed or ripped or torn because I didn't do it in a massive batch. I just focused on one sheet of paper at a time. All right, I'm bringing in a bowl with some old tea bags in it. Quite revolting really to look at, so I do apologize for that, but I've got four or five tea bags in there. And then I've got some junk mail envelopes and I'm just going to be painting those with the tea solution as well. And you'll just see how easy this is to do at your table. So we are just going to be painting it on onto a you know plastic bag or some surface that you don't mind. And I'm just using a paintbrush here. This is my anything goes paintbrush. It's half an inch flat brush. And that's all you need. And if I haven't got what I want, I'll just fold up a piece of paper and start using that. So anybody that's really feeling the pinch at the moment, you may find that you've already got a brush like that. You could use an old brush that you might have used to decorate the house with, you know, one of those smaller ones that you use to get round the skirting boards or something, the smaller ones. You can even just pick the tea bag up and do this like that. You don't even need the paintbrush. It just depends on how involved you want to get with it. So we just soak those in the tea. Be careful you don't gum down the edge with the gummed bit. So we just sort of wipe it in there and make sure you get the bottom a bit like that. And even give the tea a squeeze so that you get the tea right into there and up the sides. 
of the inside. I know that sounds a bit strange because you think, well, I can't, you're not really necessarily going to see that bit. But this is the bit that creates a quite a nice bloom down the bottom and gives it that aged look. So just pull that back in there. All right, now I'm going to lay down a piece of paper. So this is how we go from this to this. So paint, paint your tea on like that or get your tea bag and quickly do that. Just be careful not to split the bag and then turn it over and just do the other side. So now we could dry this off maybe with a hairdryer or a heat gun and just see if we can build up some layers of colour just using a tea bag. That's all we're doing. So we're looking at effects that you can achieve with ink but you can also achieve them with tea or coffee. So now I've dried that and you can see the models, you can see the effect coming through, that's quite interesting. And the reason I'm showing you all of this is because on the Treasured Page Facebook group I've tasked the UK girls over there at the moment to create a pack of variety papers and I just thought I would bring you along for the ride because you might like to have a go also. And if you would like to get involved in a swap for the Treasured Page following on with the prompts that I will be giving then you need to have a Facebook account and you need to be having a look over there because that's where it's going to be operating from. So now I've put that layer on I'm just going to dry it and then I'll talk more about my swap. So I've just dried that off and you can see we've got some more mottled effects appearing just by dabbing a tea bag around the place but that could be that could be you dipping um, a cloth in some coffee as well and making a mark using strong coffee so if you're interested in a three month swap with the Treasured Page, you need to head over to the Facebook group, which is the Treasured Page FB group, and you need to find the post. And if you're from the UK, you can enter by leaving a comment below and saying that you'd like to enter. So if you're outside of the UK and you'd like to find swap partners, you look for this one with the world, you need to put a comment below on the Facebook page and say what country you're from. And if there's enough interest, I will be able to build up a group and within that group, you will be able to do the monthly swaps and get involved in the challenges. What you do need to do is commit to the first three months and commit to making three projects that you will swap with a person that you are given in a list. So if you're joining, you will be given three people to send projects to over three months. One project once a month. And they would be in your country. So we're just trialling it to see if internationally we can get enough. There's been some requests in America for swaps and this is the only way that I can do it would be via Facebook. But if that's not suitable for you and you don't have Facebook and you love the idea of building a journal over the year and you want to get involved, then you can do it without the swaps, without the pressure of the swaps, because I'm going to be adding the videos here for everybody as well. You just need to carry on watching the treasured page and once a month the project will be put up on the first of the month and you will be able to see what I'm challenging everybody to do and you can do it in the quiet of your own home and you don't need to send pictures or make me aware of it unless you want to. If anybody would like to send a photo to the treasured page of anything that they've made then they can of course do that via the Facebook page as a lovely way to show off their work uh, from things that they've been inspired on this channel. If you're really keen for that, you would need to make some papers ahead of time so that you're all ready and then you can join in with us. And if you want to post any photos to me over Instagram, you just need to use hashtag the treasured page. And uh, the UK girls were at the moment in our swap, we use hashtag the treasured page UK. So if you'd like to see our previous swaps, you can go and have a look 
at that on Instagram under the hashtag the treasured page UK and then you'll see a collection of all of the photographs of what we've been up to this last year and that's how that swap worked we've been doing lots there's been really nice things being made okay I've just put a little bit more hot water in there so that I can get a nice tea solution and we just add another layer just keep building up the layer I'm just showing you what you can do over the course of a morning without a heat tool you could just go and paint some tea or coffee over the pieces of paper you have a whole load lined up on some on some plastic or on a work surface that you were happy with and then you just go about your day and then you'd come back an hour later and then you'd apply another coat and then you just sort of have to Remember that you've got the back as well. This is just how to get a very controlled effect over several pieces of paper, but that's the idea. So there we go, you could mass make this um, on lots of sheets of paper in the kitchen and then you just leave it to dry for an hour and then come back and do another coating. So I'm gonna now add in these. Let's add in these stickers so you could be using the backings if you save the backings of these sort of things if you've got anything like this or just cut out some leaf shapes out of some plastic see if you can get something like this okay and if I leave that to dry naturally that would probably be really interesting I'm just dabbing in more tea could be coffee but I'm just dabbing them around the shapes. Okay, this is a complete experiment and this would work much better if I didn't have the stickers on them and they were just the backing because we now have the possibility that the sticker might melt. Well, it actually hasn't, so that's fine, but I now don't particularly want tea on the sticker because I will possibly use the sticker. Uh, so yes it's really just for the backing but it doesn't visually look very good on a video so I, that's why I've left them like that so you can actually see what I'm up to but if you've got the backing you can create some shapes it's um, not going to be the best definition because they are just splodges really but it works to a degree okay so let's clear up so that we've got back is interesting and we're just having a play here but what if that was a die cut what if that had some more intricate detail and was a die cut using some plastic or perspex or some acetate what if those shapes were a little bit more interesting would that work i'm sure it would so those are things that I think we could probably try. It may be more of a fiddle, but if you've got those things anyway, it could be interesting. So these are all fun experiments. What I want to have a look at is I've got some card here with some holes punched out using my circle punch. And I'm now thinking that I could use this as a stencil. And I just thought we'd carry on using tea bags. So I've got a wet, damp tea bag here. And I just thought I would lightly put the teeth through the stencil that I've created, just punching that out using scraps. This is nothing here has cost any money whatsoever. It's just some scrap bit of stuff that's going to end up in the bin and an old tea bag. Let's dry it and see what we have. Okay so a little bit of fun we've got some circles it looks like water damage being splatted on uh, the circles haven't had any definition they've just spread out and bloomed and I don't dislike that that's a texture that's interesting so it's worth a go Let's have a go and see if this will achieve anything. We'll just lift this off. Oh, that's interesting. Well, this is quite successful. It's quite fun to do. And I'm just being mindful that the paper below is damp. So I am just dabbing up and down rather than rubbing it around because I don't want to scuff up the paper. That's the only thing to remember. Just using the using the damp paper 
um, helps to disperse the top ink a little bit more and I'm just doing some lighter and darker just to get a different look and I'm turning this around now and again so that I vary the patterning. So that's fine, I'm going to leave that one to dry and we'll look at that in a minute. And now I'm just, I can't leave it now, now I've got a lot of ink on there. So even if I were to do an impression here, I wonder if I would get anything. So let's have a look. Yes. So I'm going to do that one again. Ready. So just creating something from previous art projects is brilliant. Just using the same bit of card. Okay, so I've left this to dry and I also left this on here. So I'll just see, oh my goodness, okay, that is still wet actually, so that's probably still a bit wet. And um, that has come up like that. And on the back, we've just got some of the ink seeping through. That's quite interesting. Maybe add some more tea to places. And then we'll leave that to dry. Okay, so we've got some really interesting patterning coming on there. I'll be able to do this in a batch with maybe 10 pages, all on plastic bag. That will be really quite straightforward to do if you've got the space or the floor space and then just leaving them for an hour, half an hour, depending how warm the room is. That will give you some time for them to just dry out and then you can decide what other application you might want to put on them next. Just make a make a couple of hours out of it just something just a quiet craft that you can do it's just part of eco dyeing and using what you have to hand and this is really for the purpose of just taking something very ordinary and making it something unique that you have created yourself so that it is going to be individual to you no one else will have this piece of paper because no one else will think about the ideas that you have you can copy this of course but it really is going to come out differently from mine because you will apply it in a different way uh, you need black tea for this you could try some of the berry fruit tea and see if you can get any sort of a stain out of the tea, the dried fruits, but um, you won't know unless you try. Okay, I've got some string here. We're just going to try something else. I'm just going to give it a shot of water just to dampen that string down there. Okay, so that's now wet string. And this is vintage photo in an oxide. I'm just going to put it onto the ink pad there and get some of that stain onto the string. This is a water reactive ink so you can put water onto the ink pad. It's only going to hydrate it, it's not going to take anything away. I could see if I can get some interesting inked design just by doing something like that. Let's just roll that over like a rolling pin, just a used kitchen towel roll. And then I'm just going to spray it with water to see if I can get the ink to disperse. Let's see where we're at in about 10 minutes. Okay, we've got this so far, and I think what I'll do is I'll use the heat gun just to dry that off. Um, the colours are dispersing. You can see the yellow coming out of this vintage photo, so that's quite a nice colour. It's interesting to see whether I'll get any of the string shape, but it's still too early to tell because it's still very wet. But interesting patterning comes sweeping over there. I like that very much. So we'll just keep going with our techniques. Okay, moment of truth. Let's take this away. Oh, look. So it has left some of the string marking. And weirdly, it's a blue-purple design. So it's still a little damp in places. So we just add that all over building up the colour. I've just used the lid there just to sandwich that in so I don't get it all over my fingers but I think we're a bit too late for that. And then taking the string 
I'm going to link it back up here. Round again. Makeshift rolling pin. <laughs> that one doesn't want to squash down into position. There we go. And then squirt it with some water or some more tea. Maybe more tea. Well, it's quite relaxing because it's just sort of feel like you feel like you're doing something a bit naughty. You feel like you're playing and you're messing about and it just takes you back to your childhood when you... You know, it was OK to do these things. And I I just sort of don't see why we have to stop doing those things because they were so relaxing then. They were a way to process and play out a scenario in your mind then. What on earth is the difference now? None. None whatsoever. So enjoy the process because it is quite fun. It looks a mess as usual, but we'll see at the end whether this has been worth our time and then you don't have to do it. <laughs> uh, but it's one way of getting very cheap but interesting pages for your junk journal. OK, moment of truth for the other side. So still a little bit wet in places. Oh my goodness, this is a darker one. So this looks like rust to me, like some sort of something off of the beach. So that is quite interesting and that's paler. All right, so then we've got some showing through on the back. That again is quite interesting. So it does want a bit more of a drying off. Okay, so I think I'm just gonna sweep over some more tea on the back of this one for one last time just to darken some of those lighter colour areas and this makes me feel like I've got a really good background paper coming here. It reminds me of the seaside with that sort of rope, that rusty rope sort of look and then the other one came out with some bubbles so it feels a bit like it might be a holiday. Certainly something to do with a beach, desert island, tropical tropical something how fun so these are the piles of paper from today and you can see what they look like all dry and flattened you can squash those under a book overnight uh, you can lightly press it with an iron on a on a low heat and you can uh, just let them settle down with a weight on them in any way you'd like to do that this here is the first one so that's really fun then we've got this, which could be torn down. We could use that, or it could be a page. And that's how that appears. This bright one. And that's how that came out on the back. So that's quite good. It reminds me of the beach, that one. Uh, then we've got this one with the sticker tree idea. I think this would work nicely if you had a die cut machine and you want to try some of your die cuts using acetate or some of the thicker plastic that you might encounter with packaging. And just like that on the other side. Again, that one could probably do with another coat if we so wished. And then this one here, and that's like that on the back. So that's fun. So we've got five sheets there. That's enough to start a signature. And then perhaps if you wanted something a bit decorative in the middle, you could use something like that as your signature centre and that's where you do your binding. So if you have a look at the previous binding video, you'll be able to choose one of those stitches and you could stitch that whole lot together if you wanted. And then you could uh, come up with a cover that you wanted to have onto that and that would be your first signature. So this is how it would appear in a book would be page one, then you'd have that, then you'd have that. See, they look it's totally different when you've got it folded and in the book as a contrast. You can move things around so, until you're happy. Um, we've got that one. Or that might even look nicer that way. And you just, you just play with them so the colours work. And then we've got that. And then we've got that, and that would be your centre. There we go. And that's how to very quickly make some pages and put it together as a signature. Or we could have that as our front cover. There you go. And then you just put something over there where we cover that bit up. Nice sticker. 
and then we've got our little booklet all ready to add some scrap bits to it some pictures paintings anything bit fun just a bit of fun and just to show you these are how the envelopes worked out and then we've just really knocked down the white given them a vintage feel they are just base covered envelopes they look utterly uninspiring at the moment but when you start cutting them down or tearing things off of them move that because i don't like that we could then say that we're adding this to one of these pages so you could use this paper to decorate it you've now created papers to work with when it's all stuck down you've now achieved a pocket for which to add your interesting things and you can put down with a glue stick some napkin maybe you could have some fabric going on there little collage nice label of some sort and then uh, before you know it you've started a journal so that is in its basic form how you can simply make a very basic journal envelope here could be a start of something let's just get rid of that raggedy edge the next problem to solve is how are you going to get rid of the black writing because we don't want that private and confidential boring nobody wants to see that so take another scrap of paper just something you've torn off and stick that down over the top of that ugly black writing and then straight away it's looking more interesting and then do it again see i've tore that um, paper from the middle section off so we could bring that in here and put that down over there in fact that would go all the way up that length and that would solve that issue so while we're just thinking about all of that let's just do it and get some glue on this little mat here which has just been totally brilliant so this is a scrap of wrapping paper I think I need to come here so yeah, just altering envelopes here, creating tags or tucks or pockets. Not sure what this will be, but uh, certainly going to be more interesting in about 30 seconds. This is a bit of writing paper, which I've previously just put T over, exactly in the same technique. So what I think I'll do is I'll just tear this down. I've just got a straight edge ruler here. I'm just going to get a ripped edge flat. There we go remove those little bit of eco dyed paper just a scrap but everything looks nicer with a torn edge so we'll just take that off uh, all round doesn't matter about the top because that would be trimmed anyway and just roll it over the top of your glue stick there we go You can ink if you want to add an inked edge around anything like that. With the other side of this, the packaging paper, we'll just run that up the side there. Just gives a nice edge on that plastic. And then that bit can go down there. That's quite nice. So some scraps, just having a look what else I've got here. Now that looks like it's uh, really been around the world. A bit of Japanese writing. Um, the paper is so beautiful. It's just this lovely soft but thin paper. So I just think that that's quite lovely. Add that there. So this is just tea staining, just looking at the tea staining and then seeing how you can very quickly get on playing with old scraps that you really can get your hands on. Look, there's just some wrapping paper, some packaging paper, there is a, a little bit of coloured paper which has got just some splash of paint on it, little bits, little pieces, all of this stuff that I've made, nothing, nothing here that's unachievable. 
unless you haven't got a rubber stamp but one quick look round a couple of thrift shops and you'll be able to find these things I don't know what that is some bit of rubbish but that actually looks quite sweet there which might mean that the green can come in over here let's put that green there Another bit, this is a bit of tissue paper, but it is a jelly print. So that is acrylic paint on tissue paper. Stick this down. This has just come off of a cover of a, an old book where that was broken on the spine. Just a bit of broken book page. Now an interesting texture and colour. Uh, I've got some rag here. That looks nice. That can go down, bit of glue, down it goes, dark brown, that's an off cut of something from the Marianne North Journal, that can go there, and then we'll bring this in, which was from a previous video, this stamping over some collage. We've got this over here, which is totally fine as a writing space we could even just see if i can get this bit up this is the bit where it is um you know stuck down originally no i can't so we'll stick something over the top of that put down a slick of glue so this is a nice wide washi tape which will just cover up that problem there washi nice to use that up and uh, I'll just add some napkin, I think, down here. Let's see if we can just stick it on, I think, and then we can cut it off like that. Use that again another time. Anything else coming up? Cut it away. And this bit here, we'll just rip that off. And if we want to repair up there, we could put a bit up there, but I don't think I do. I'm going to put this random piece of cotton because that looks fun that's just an off cut with some um well ugly stitching but i actually like the ugly stitching more than i like the perfect stitching on the other side so embrace the ugly stitching and honor it and give it its place because why not it wasn't going to end up on the original project but now it's going to end up here lovely and then we want something interesting there. And I think I'm going to use these parrots in here. Why not? So this comes from the freebie. You can go and find this over on the coffee shop and help yourself to these fun images. But this is going to look nice, I believe. Tucked in. So we just cut that out and then see if they want to come and live in here. Oh yeah, they look great. And then just to get inside the envelope nice and easy, we just snip it open because that will just be more straightforward. Get the glue going round where you want it. Put your image in. Check that you're happy, check that we can see the top of the parrot's head. Sort of bring him over a bit. Push that down. Okay, and then I'm going to just glue that top bit up again because we've done what we needed to. Give it an ink. There we go, parrot's in position. This wants to be sat. Um, under something heavy just to get it to be straight come around with a bit of ink I'm going to make this into a tag so I'm just going to cut off the corners and then we'll just do a hole punch where we think a hole punch might be nice like that You can get some little sticky dots from the um, 
stationers, little sticky dots from the stationers. You could put some ink over those. Little dot where you think the centre is. And then you can punch out a hole. And you can... create some reinforcers like that. Lots of ways of doing this, but uh, this is a good way. And then just put that over the top of your hole there and then one on the back as well. And you can decorate those any, any way you like. You could put stamps on there. You could do um, you know, script stamp. You could really make those interesting and then just punch them out as you go. So this is a tag with a difference because we can we can do that so what I think will be quite nice it's, it's going to be a little pocket for secret journaling so I'm just going to give it a little divot these are why the circle punches come in so useful because then you will be able to just give it a little thumb hole like that so you can see that there's something else going on in there and probably don't like that very much. So. so I'm just looking through my straight scraps, which I've made for hinge pieces in the past, and I'm just going to choose one that, that fits, and then we'll put that in there so we've got something interesting to look at. Or it could be pink. It could be like that, or it could be any of these just decorated up, but I'll go with the one that I've already done. And that was discarded because the stamp didn't come out brilliantly. So that's fine. All I do is just see where I want it to go, which is going to be there. And then we'll just cut that down. So I'll just lose that bit off the end and then put my glue on the strip all the way down. And then that can come and live in here. And this is all just scraps, guys. This is nothing that you couldn't do. There's nothing here that's a special purchase other than that was the black ink and some stamps. But you don't even have that. You you do, But that could be more wrapping paper. That could just be anything decorative. It could be something that you have written on. Anything overhanging, just trim that off. Make sure that you're happy. And then we just add something fun in the top. Just a piece of fabric, a string, something like a lace, anything. This one just, I feel this just looks like something from a different country. Uh, so we're just adding that in there like that. Just that bit of orange and then I thought I might like this down here somewhere so I might like that on there just to tie in with the orange theme right and then just because there's blue in the parrot I'm bringing in a bit of blue here with this little shard of paper there like that I've got a little rip there so I'm just going to repair it with this piece that I cut off it's a bit of an odd one, but it might look quite interesting, particularly if I just get the edges with some ink there. So I'll just add that in there. And then we just ink all the way down here to tie it all in and make it look meant. And this is one way to decorate an envelope and create a fun tag just making it up as you go along just really enjoying the process aging it that looks like some ticket or tag that has come from a foreign land from a long time ago on somebody's wonderful adventures and i've even found a king fisher stamp from new zealand and this is from australia so australia and new zealand so i think that we can have this on here which is just fitting because we've been looking at kingfishers throughout the Marianne North Journal. So it's quite fun that that has found its way into my scrap tray and now onto a tag here. So that is all quite interesting and it looks like M. And I'm just sticking that straight on, even with its interesting paper. 
backing because that tells a story in itself that it was airmail and it had contained some fun letter from somebody so we just muddy it up with a little bit so it's been hanging around in someone's luggage for several years <laughs> and then uh, that's what you can write on there and then more secret journaling inside and that is how to get involved in junk journaling with your scraps your tea your tea bags your tea your coffee staining any old little snippets or bits you can get your hands on put it all together in a bundle get a basket of all these things together and just start playing just slow down and start playing and here we go so this could just be your fun journal with your ticket a little bit long never mind always shorten it and uh, there we go so that is going to hang out the top why not or have your pages that way okay go you can make a start on a signature and you can have a go at envelopes and decorating an envelope in a junk journal style and that is using very little and you don't have to fold your papers that way you might choose to fold and bind your journal that way in which case you will be able to have that as part of the front cover and there we go put a binding down that nothing to say you have to have a thick cover and that could be your journal and you could have a lovely time decorating it writing your thoughts about a trip that you're planning or a weekend away so there we go nice weekend project just a little just a little bit of fun just to really bring back some of the essence of junk journaling and make sure that everybody understands how simple and fun that can be no rules, no worries, just you having a play, experiencing something relaxing, taking time out. That's all there is to it and it really is as simple and as fun as that. You can make anything complicated but we really don't need to so there we go that's how fun and simple that can all be. So if you oh. found value here please like and subscribe, give me a thumbs up and above everything else just slow down and make crafting time for you. Bye bye now!